So this video is uh, about how to deal with and fight stenosis, uh, which is the narrowing of the nerve channels uh, when you've got bone growth and stuff growing around the nerves, uh, as well as um, the uh, fight against uh, uh, degenerative disc disease. I think they just call it something else now here recently. They've been calling it something else, but a lot of people know it by the three Ds, you know, um, degenerative disc disease. So um, it is a natural occurring thing, but it also can be advanced by um, a lifestyle. You know, a lot of people that have that smoke or um, you don't drink enough water uh, before bed things like that. Um, also, if you, if you want to fight it, the things that I found, um, because I have it from my neck all the way down, you know, through to my lumbar. So, uh, what I do to fight it is I drink water before bed and I also, uh, and I only drink about a half, half a bottle of water before bed. Uh, so, and, and the reason that that is, <clears throat> is there's, um, the reason that you got to do it that way is because, uh, the disc itself is porous. So, um, <clears throat> it, your disc feeds at night, uh, while you're sleeping, while you're laying down, um, the fluid from your spinal cord or, or, uh, uh, the spinal sac have, uh, there's nutrients that run up and down. <clears throat> so they go in and in and out of the porous. Um, part of the discs and, and feed it because there's no blood to them. So um, anyway, there's that. Uh, it's better to. That's why it's good to take nutri uh, nutrients at night too before bed. Uh, you don't have to take all of them. Obviously, it's it's good to take them throughout the day, of course. But also, um, it's good to take something at night too. So <clears throat> as far as like. Uh, Uh, that my routine that I've been because I've been doing really well fighting against this stuff. Um, I advanced mine from a bunch of things um, throughout the years, so <clears throat> so I had to kind of do the opposite to fight it. So now I have a uh, it's called a cervical decompression uh, thing. It holds your jaw in the back of your skull, and you kind of basically uh, really you know kind of slide uh some people have a, a weight like a, a a bag of water that pulls the head up and so then it puts uh less pressure here and helps um decompress it myself uh, when i started this i had a 21 inch neck and i was doing wrestlers bridges and stuff and built my neck up really really thick and so <clears throat> and tight and then i ended up get, getting in a wreck and herniating my neck um uh, in a side whiplash. <clears throat> and so after that, I decided, uh, I better get on something to, uh, fix my, fix my neck. And so that's what I did. I have, uh, <clears throat> the decompression unit and I also have, uh, an inversion table where I do, uh, where I hang upside down, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, uh, they always tell you to do like 30 seconds uh, of, of resistance or, or you know, uh, pulling against your your skull to stretch your neck and then another 30 seconds on the uh, uh, hyper or the uh, inversion table and then you build up to where you're doing a couple of minutes at a, at a time like two, like you can do up to, uh, I believe it's four or five minutes in a row and then, uh, but you got to build up to that. A lot of doctors say not to go over that. A lot of chiropractors do so <clears throat> I at most I only um, the most I do is five minutes so uh, the inversion table has has done wonders for my back my low my thoracic all the way to my lumbar and strangely it's even working on my cervical a lot more than I figured it would be which is the cervical is the neck uh, thoracic is where the on the opposite side of the chest and then lumbar is the, the right above your butt um, so Anyway, uh, I do a lot of uh, fitness uh, exercises. Um, you know, I consider 
everything from stretching um, and uh, tension, like muscular flexion work, like I flex my neck um, in different positions and tighten them up and then release. And then I do that um, to strengthen the whole area. So I'll twist my head to the left and I'll, I'll flex my neck and then I'll go back to the right and flex my neck in different areas, put my chin up, put it down. And I flex those areas because if you don't, when you're healing up, if you don't do stuff like that, you're going to have weak spots. And it's, I found that, and, and the doctors have said my neck and back are healing up really quick. So, um, I, I had a, I had three herniations, um, my cervical, my thoracic and my lumbar. And, uh, I also have degenerative disc disease, but it has a lot to do with, um, you know, some accidents. And then also my, uh, Well, on top of the accidents, I ended up, uh, uh, I had a, I had a, a fight a long time ago, uh, about 15 years ago, I got punched in the neck and it broke my C3 area. And, uh, so, and then with a whiplash and then, uh, with all my deadlifting and my squats and stuff like that, I ended up, uh, uh, having degenerated this disease and then a lot of inflammation and bone grindings around those areas and so not only do you do the uh, stretching the flexing and light works um, light workouts like you can hang your head off the bed and pump your neck you can do hyper extensions do uh, various abdominal exercises don't get crazy with anything you know um, but do a little bit of what you can while you're healing up um, in the first month you don't have to do any of that, just heal up. But the second and third month, you should start a really light program of exercise uh, and build up a little bit of the muscle slightly, you know, don't let it atrophy. Um, and then just uh, just keep exercising, light exercising for the year. Uh, after about six months, you can start doing more calisthenics, uh, you know, hip raises off the floor, um, reverse sit-ups, um, or reverse crunches, I should say. And then, um, crunches, uh, twists, uh, you know, do light twisting. Don't twist like, you know, like the song and stuff where in the old fifties and sixties twisting like crazy. Um, go easy and you'll, you'll see that you heal up really fast. Now, as far as getting rid of, um, some of that inflammation, um, a really good thing to do is, uh, you'll, uh, you'll, you want to take a thing called enzyme, an enzyme formula, uh, enzymes help eat away a lot of that inflammation. And, uh, as far as the stenosis goes, you know, there's a lot of, um, when that narrows around the nerve, then you get a lot of pain, you can collapse, you fall over and you have all kinds of lovely things happen. So take, um, you'll want to take the, uh, enzyme formula, but also, start taking a gelatin packet. Um, you can have, uh, unless of course, you know, you have a lot of, uh, bone growths and stuff like that going on. Don't take any gelatin for a little bit, a good year, I would suggest. Um, uh, but I take both gelatin and an enzyme and, uh, I've had really good luck with it so far. I still have to go in and get, I want to get an x-ray of my neck and see again how it's doing. Uh, and as well as my thoracic and lumbar. Um, and then I got to get one of my pelvis because of, uh, I tried like pressing a truck off somebody uh, when they got crushed at work. I kind of went into, you know, um, crazy mode and decided to try to leg press a truck because he was screaming for help. and. Uh, so I leg pressed and tore my stomach and it doesn't seem to heal hundred percent. So I don't have any bulges like a hernia, but I have something going on. I think I tore something and possibly need surgery. Um, I can't even imagine giving up my strongman training. You know, I, I, I love lifting up stupid, heavy stuff. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not really into like super, super heavy stuff. Like, uh, you know, I used to pick up car engines. I'm not into that anymore, but I like to pick up two to 300 pounds on each hand. And you know, that's about my limit for what I really like to do. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, 
but anyway, that was, I kind of went off on a little tangent there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I think that uh, one of the most important things is to stay hydrated, um, give your body good nutrients, sleep well, <clears throat> um, stretch your neck and your thoracic and your lumbar often like multiple times a day. It doesn't take much. Um, look up yoga practices. There's, there's some amazing yoga stuff out there as well as non-yoga. Um, uh, exercising. Uh, check out Wim Hof too. Wim Hof is another guy that's um, absolutely amazing, but I think in fact he does uh, yoga as well. Um, some of his stuff is. <clears throat> um, but yeah, just uh, um, hopefully all this information helps. Um, comment if you need any help or anything like that, any questions, things that I've gone through. Always go to a doctor though, get x-rayed. <clears throat> um, go to Also go to a chiropractor, get x-rayed, or have him look at the x-rays as well, or vice versa. And then um, I, I've gone through both. I've had a surgeon look at me, I've had a chiropractor and a regular doctor look at my x-rays. And so, I don't mean anything by saying a regular doctor, but <clears throat> like just looking at doctors in general, um, you know, super smart people. Um, anybody that knows a lot more than I do about the body is really important to, to uh, have people like that check you out. And it's good to have multiple opinions, um, talk to them about ideas about what they think. Uh, some, a lot of doctors nowadays don't even wanna do surgeries on people, they, they just want people to um, kind of adapt and uh, try to heal themselves up <clears throat> because uh, at least that's what the surgeons I've been talking to lately said, you know, they. A lot, you know, there's like little things they can do, you know, or they want, would like to do, you know, just do a, you know, a, a cleanup or something of your, like if you got a ton of bone grindings or something like that, and it could possibly touch your nerves and they'll hook you up, you know, help you out. And, you know, that's kind of what they're for, you know, doctors are a really good thing. A lot of people, you know, either love them or hate them. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I, I had a bad stigma about them, you know, like I didn't want to have anything to do with doctors forever. And, you know, I, I think it stemmed from my, from my mom dying, um, and it was the doctor's fault, you know, and so I was, I was not happy about it. Um, and so I didn't see a doctor for like a decade, you know, even though I'd been injured pretty bad. Uh, I just said, hell with it, I'm not doing it, you know, and, and then I ended up going my, First doctor I met was really cool. The second one was terrible, um, you know, just because of the way he was. But then I ended up seeing like uh, three other doctors that were awesome. And so, um, you know, if you don't like a doctor, a specific doctor, try out another one. You know, um, even if you're in a small area, get in a vehicle and drive to another area. You know, I drive 200 plus miles for a specialist. So, hold on a second. So, uh, my wife just got in the car with her little dog. He got um he got his uh, little haircut. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good. You're so good. So um anyway the uh what you need to do is just uh get some X-rays, get some opinions, but also get an aversion table. And a chiropractor typically has a cervical decompression unit. It's like I said, it's just a thing that wraps around your ch your chin and the back of your skull, and then you can stretch into it and do it multiple times a day. I know it seems like it's going to be excessive, but it's not. It's really not that difficult um, to take less than five minutes of your time to do this. And I'm telling you right now, you will heal up super, super fast. When I was deadlifting, I was five foot ten. I had shrunk down from six foot and a half inches. And every two years, I'd get a DOT physical and I was shrinking. And then I ended up at five ten with horrible back and neck pain. And so I just got checked again and they said I was six feet tall and I had to, I've been five eleven and a half, five eleven, eleven and a half for I don't know, a good six, eight years and then um, since I've been doing this decompression and then a lot of calisthenics and then I've been I cut weight, which is another thing you want to do too is um, cut weight, um, watch your carbs uh, and the carbs that you do eat, try to eat low glycemic carbs. Um, you can go up as high as medium glycemic, but it's better to eat low glycemic, you know, berries are a low glycemic, you know, um, it will help you maintain your weight and also try to eat more meat. Um, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, yes, you can cut weight yourself. Um, however, uh, you would like to, uh, 
you know, whatever diet you want to, there, I've seen some extremely healthy people that were vegans, um, even though there's a push, um, on both sides of vegan and, and, uh, vegetarian against, um, the carnivore people. Um, I've seen extremely healthy people, uh, between, uh, between both of them. So anyway, I'm getting a call, so I will, uh, I hope this is good information, and um, I'll talk to you later. Uh, please comment.